Right, right up, right up, right up. So should I do a one? Be this way, then turn back around? No. No turning around? <laughs> whatever. Do whatever you want. This is so hard to do. Oh my gosh. You took a long time today, too. I know. Alright. Ready? I think so. Okay. Amanda wants to. See, you're laughing. I can't do it. Why are you I laughing at me? I didn't mean to laugh. Amanda wants the tile to extend a few inches past the tub, so we had to remove a little more of the drywall here. We're gonna to have to put in a few pieces of blocking though so that the backer board has something to attach to now because there was no stub where we cut this out. Amanda had to go get the kids at school, so I'm left to hang this backer board by myself. Luckily, it's super heavy. If you watched the previous video, I mentioned that the other owner of this house that we bought it from had used drywall screws to hang the backer board. Those won't work. Drywall screws are meant for drywall and that's it. In applications like this, they might rust and the rust can even bleed through your grout lines of your tile. A lot of people don't realize that tile and grout is not completely 100% waterproof. And if water gets back here and hits those screws, they can start to rust. These are the screws you're supposed to use with this. These are specifically made for this backer board. They won't rust, and that's what's meant to hold this up. I have to turn a fan on. Talk amongst yourselves. Let's 
getting ready to put this last wall on here and I noticed when I walked around the other side that the bottom plate of the framing was wet. So got a leak somewhere. I'll show you right here. You can see right there. And at first I thought maybe this was leaking because this is wet right here. I thought maybe I had compromised the solder a little bit when I was pushing on this to connect these fittings. But the way I usually check to see where the leak's coming from is you want to go to the highest point that is wet. I know that's not a real scientific method here, but usually I just check. Anytime you see a puddle on the ground, go all the way up and the highest point you find that's wet, that's where your leak's coming from. And I've already done that. I checked on this side. It wasn't that elbow. If you can see right here. I don't know if you can see on my hand. But that's wet right there. So I guess that's where I threaded this on. I just didn't get enough Teflon on there and it's got a leak on it. So I'm just going to cut this loose because it's just one little elbow here. I'm going to cut that off and redo that real quick. I'm just gonna turn the water back on and see if it leaks. seams and then we're going to put a waterproofing membrane over all the screw holes and the mesh tape and we're going to go ahead and roll it on the whole backboard to make sure everything is watertight. That way if water ever gets behind your tile it can't leak behind any of your screw hole penetrations or your seams where the backboard met and get behind to your framing. Amanda's going to go ahead and put some masking tape down around the edge of the tub to kind of make clean up a little easier if we have any drips or spills and we put a black, uh, plastic drop cloth down the bottom of the tub to catch anything that falls. The mesh tape goes on just like drywall tape. It's got self-adhesion to it, but if you notice it's not sticking to your backer board, you may need to take a damp cloth and just wipe your seams down from the dust from where you were cutting it will prevent it from sticking. Now we need to cover our mesh tape with some thin set. We're using a rapid set mortar and this stuff dries pretty quick, so we're gonna get in here together and tag team it. You may can tell from my shirt, it is super hot in here, but all this is done now. And now we wait. dry now so I'm gonna go ahead and start putting on our waterproofing and we're using a product called Red Guard. Uh, it goes on pink and dries red so you know that it's dry. 
you can probably get away with just rolling this on. We will eventually roll all of this in here, but I like to start out brushing it on all my seams and all my penetrations, all the screw holes, and especially in this niche, I like to brush it on two good coats to make sure that it's fully coated because those are the places that would be most likely to leak. So I'm gonna brush on two good coats on all of that, and then we'll go back and roll everything. Okay guys, that's the first coat of Red Guard done. You can see we've got all the seams and all the screw hole penetrations all covered up. Uh, like I said before, you may get away with just rolling all of this on and maybe just cutting in your corners. But to me, I really wanna make sure when I put this stuff on that it's getting good coverage to the spots that are most likely to leak, which would be like your shower niches or any place that we have an opening where the two pieces were put together or the screw holes. So I would rather go above and beyond when it comes to things like that and make sure they're covered. So I'm gonna do a second coat on those and I'm gonna roll two coats on all the walls. And I won't make you sit here and watch all that because that's literally like watching paint dry. So the next time you see this, it'll all be red. I'll have rolled everything on here and it'll be ready for tile. Thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you got something useful out of this video. If you would, please like, subscribe, and comment down below. I'll try to leave a link in the description of all the products that we've used and some of the tools that you've seen me use doing all this. And thank you guys so much for watching. I'm getting out of this hot shower and heading home. See ya.